Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I am Bob Fowler and what an honor, privilege, and joy it is for me to be with you here today live. If you're joining me live, if you're watching on the rebroadcast, I welcome you as well. I pray that for the next few moments you would open up your heart and have an attitude of receptance from the Lord. Lord, I want to receive what you have for me, a spirit of expectation. We have said it so often, but it bears repeating that expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. You know, Jesus himself said that he could do no mighty work there because of their unbelief. Because of them not anticipating, expecting, being open and receptive to the potential and the possibility of him superseding even their physical challenges that they were facing, that they could see, that they could touch, that they were dealing with. My friend, let me just share with you today, no matter what you're going through, God is able. Ephesians 3.20 declares that it's such a popular verse, well-known verse, but it's a powerful verse. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above and beyond all that you would ever ask, dream, or even think of according to the power or in in agreement with the power that is at work within you. What am I trying to share with you today? And what do I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to open our eyes to today? That there's nothing too difficult, nothing too challenging, no matter what it may be. Maybe today it looks like you're walking through a very difficult place, a difficult time, a difficult moment in your life. Well, no matter how challenging it may be, the good news is, is that God is able not only to take you through it, but to open your eyes, to open our eyes to the beauty, to the glory, to the purpose, and even the plan of God in the midst of your challenge. And I feel that's a word for somebody today. And I tell you what, if you don't take it, I will. Wherever you're at, you don't have to get out of or get through your challenge for you to get or receive or see what God wants you to receive or to see. He can open your eyes if If, now this is a big if, if our heart is right. And today what I want to talk about for just a little bit is the heart of a worshiper. If you know anything about me, if you've watched any any of the programs, you hear the word relationship. Friday night's program was quite a bit about relationship, our personal, individual relationship with the Lord. Now, what does that mean? You know, after the program on Friday night, I I began to wonder, did I clarify, did I help explain or expose the beauty of what a relationship really is? Well, when I was thinking about that, I was thinking about earthly relationships, relationships between a husband and wife. One of the things that comes up in relationship between a husband and wife, or for that matter, anyone, is communication. And I had made mention about prayer, that prayer is not only what we say, but it's the ability that we develop, the skill, the the know-how that we develop in listening. And I had mentioned, I believe it was on one of the programs last week, that the most powerful, important thing that takes place during our time in prayer as it relates to our relationship with God is not what we say to him. It is what he says to us. Now listen, in the years that I have been a believer, I'm 56, I gave my heart to the Lord, I received what Christ did when I was 15, Over these past years, the one thing that I have learned is that, is that the most powerful and beneficial thing that I will ever personally receive from God during my time of prayer, meditating on God, thinking on God, spending time with God, is not what I say to him, 
but it is the words that he speaks to me. This is something else that I've learned, that typically the Holy Spirit does not shout. He doesn't scream. He doesn't barge in. Now, are there times that he will? Absolutely. And I had alluded on this program, there was a time in my life that I was about to make a very terrible decision. I knew what I was supposed to do. Now, you pray for me if you've never been in this place, but (laughs) I knew what the will of God was for my life, but I was vacillating. I was contemplating about just compromising and making the wrong decision. And I remember one night at that time, I was working in a rather large ministry and there was between eight or 10,000 people in this service. And the worship song was going on and there was a gentleman by the name of Dudley Smith that was singing. Uh, And I mean, people were just worshiping, entering in, celebrating, praising God. And the pastor of the church was sensitive enough, and this is key, sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit that once the Holy Spirit is beginning to manifest during a song, during a moment, not even a song, during a moment, that you don't move past that. You linger there. You're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And I've likened these moments to a surfer riding a wave that once a surfer gets up on the crest of that wave, when you think about it, it's a very fragile place. They're riding up on the top, the edge of that wave. They don't want to go down too far. They don't want to go back too far because they'll fall on the other side of the wave. So it's a very sensitive place. And so it was just a moment in the service, the worship service, to where people were just opening up, they were expressing, they were receiving the Holy Spirit. There was liberty there for him to move and to minister. And it was during this moment that I had my hands raised and all of a sudden, for lack of a better word, I have to just put it in these terms. The power of God hit me And I began to jump up and down, just straight up and down. And before I knew it, I had moved out in front of the altar, in front of all of these thousands of people. Now, if you know me now, I'm a little bit freer than I was back then, but I was a little little more introverted back then, a little more aware of what people thought. And, uh, but in that moment, I just was so caught up in the presence of God. And not only was I jumping up and down, not only was I being moved in front of all of these people while the music was going on, but I began to spin around and around and around. And the only way that I can describe this, maybe on television or in movies, you have seen the reenactment of of someone that is a part of an Indian tribe and and they're praying for rain and and whoever the person that was selected to do this particular dance uh, begins to uh, with their hands go up and down and they they turn around well that that was me and I was turning around rather quickly was I aware of what I was doing uh, somebody asked me the next day, said, Bob, were you, would you have been able to stop what you were doing? And I said, yes, I was aware of what was taking place, but why would I? Because when you experience the presence of the Lord in such a deep way, in such a manifestation, uh, you don't want to. You don't care what people think. And at the end of of the Holy Spirit just working in my heart, the moment that I stopped, the Holy Spirit whispered to me what he had originally told me and reminded me and clarified to me what he wanted me to do. So are there times that the Holy Spirit, that God will grab a hold of us and uh, not seem to be so quiet and so gentle 
Absolutely. But I needed that. But typically, there are, there, there are gentle words. There are gentle leadings. Now, the one thing I've learned about the Lord is He's very balanced. He will do whatever is necessary in order for us to wake up, in order for us to listen. But typically, He's very gentle. And in all of our hearts, the one thing that God has called us to do and called us to be, he's called us to be worshipers. He's called us to be. Now, you got to remember, I've pastored, Aidas and I have pastored for years. Typically, when people think of a worship service, they think of church. They think of music. They think of certain styles of music. But that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about our own personal private time of worshiping God, of stealing away moments that we can spend time with God. Just as I shared last week to where Jesus sent the disciples in the boat by themselves to go to the other side of the lake while he did the work of an usher, while he sent the multitudes away. And the moment that he sent away, and I use the word distractions, that even ministry can become a distraction when it gets in the way of our personal private time of worshiping the Lord. I've also mentioned to you about how easy it is for people in the ministry or people who are active in ministry to get so busy with the work of the Lord that they lose sight of the importance of the Lord of the work, their own personal relationship. And why do I share that? Because I face that challenge. And I believe that every person involved in ministry, if they would be honest, would say that that has taken place in their life. Why is that? Because the enemy is going to do his very best to try to steal away your time of having that personal, intimate time of fellowship with the Lord. And so the heart of a worshiper is something that I think we should, every one of us, be mindful of. And I could not think of anyone greater that stands out anymore in Scripture than the psalmist David. Out of all of the things that David was, David was a great king. He was a great leader. He was a great craftsman. He created musical instruments. But the one area of David's life that superseded all of those things, and I believe that all of those things come out out of that intimacy, that personal, private time and worship to his God. See, it's not that God does not want to use us to do great exploits. It's not that God does not want us to to use us to see men and women impacted with the power of the gospel. It's not that God does not want us to see the miraculous. However, remember the disciples when Jesus empowered and commissioned and sent the disciples out. And they came back, they were so excited. They said, Lord, even the demons, even the devils are subject to the authority that you have given to us. And Jesus quickly reminded them, he said, don't rejoice don't get don't let this be the first thing that you're so excited about don't rejoice that you have power over devils and then he pointed them right back to their personal relationship and salvation that they've experienced with god now what was he saying to me as i read that always be mindful of the opportunity, of the gift of grace that has been given to you as it relates to your salvation. Have you ever wondered where you would be if you didn't know Jesus today? Man, I'm telling you, as believers, we face some challenging moments. We face some challenging times. 
we go through some crises that if it were not for Christ, what would we do? And so understanding that we are called to be worshipers, we're invited, we're given the privilege and the opportunity to be a worshiper. And as I mentioned last week, it's very easy to talk about the importance of worship, just like it's important to talk about the importance of prayer. It's, it's, it's important to talk about the importance of studying the word, but the application of the truth that we hear is something entirely different. I almost liken it that if you had a matchbook and you had a match, the potential of that match, the fire, the warmth, the potential that that fire would provide for you, but it is useless unless you strike the match. You could smell the most beautifully prepared meal, but unless you sit down and unless you allow that food to become a part of your physical body, smelling it, the aroma of it, the care and the time and the effort put into preparing that meal, it won't serve any purpose. Well, the same is true with you and I. We're called to be worshipers, but will we take full opportunity and advantage of the opportunity that has been given to us through the relationship given to us in Christ? Let me just read a little bit. As I said, David was, he was a lot of things, but one of the greatest things that rises to the top is that he was a worshiper. And in Psalms 27, and we're going to come back here tomorrow, but in Psalm 27, beginning at verse one, the Bible says of David, and these are his words, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this will I be confident. We're going to finish up with verse four. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. As I said Friday night, thinking back at what the Apostle Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. What is the one thing? And I believe it was Friday night that I, I posed the question, if you had one thing that you would be able to ask of the Lord, what would that one thing be? Would it be financial prosperity? Would it be that he would use you to perform great and mighty miracles? Uh, would it be that, uh, what would it be? And I believe those things are wonderful. They're important. They're necessary. They're in the word. But I believe that all of those things flow out of that place of relationship with God and worshiping God. You, you know, people who spend time in personal private time of worshiping God are people that experience these things that I just listed and so much more. Everything flows from that relationship that we have been given with God. And that relationship is expressed, it is fed, it is watered, it is made real to us when we enter in and we set aside time, I can't stress that enough. Why? Because there's so many distractions. Your problems are a distraction. Work is a distraction. Responsibilities are a distraction. All of those things are important, but they can become doing things for God, ministry, 
service to others. All of those things are wonderful. I'm not saying the opposite, but what I am saying is when they take first seat in our personal devotion, relationship, spending time with God, they will become something other than what they were intended to be. How many people spend their strength, their time, their energy, and use their gifting to pursue after wealth? Quite possibly, they attain that. And then they reach a point in their life as they look back at their life and they begin to think, I wish that I would have had different priorities in my life. Well, my friend, whether you're nine or 99 today, the good news is you can begin to make those changes today. You know, sometimes if the enemy can allow us and get us to a place that we're so busy that we lose sight of the value and the importance of our relationship and our personal worship to God, Do you know that he can make us impotent when it comes to walking out the promises of God's word and seeing God's faithfulness manifested in our lives? You know, when you think about it, why did Jesus come? Why did he shed his blood? Why did he make the ultimate sacrifice? So that you and I could have relationship with God to walk out the rest of our life and spend eternity in relationship with God. And maybe in some of our our lives, we hear the word relationship and we think, how much time can we spend a relationship? Well, I don't know about you, but Adis and I have been married 31 years and we're still growing in our communication in our understanding, and in our relationship. I've been a believer. I've been a recipient of what Christ has done since I was 15 years old, and I'm still growing in the under... I'm still growing and learning to depend upon Him. I'm still learning in how to trust Him. I'm still growing in how to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm still growing and seeing revelation and understanding from the Word. Oh, my friend, you'll never reach the end of the depth and the breadth and the height of where God wants us and how deep that relationship is as it relates to us and Him. You see, relationship with God is more than obeying the Word. It's more than keeping the Word. It begins by our love, by our worship, and by our, 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 our willingness to set aside time. And, and I know I'm stressing that. You know, what, what is it with this setting aside time? Because if you don't set aside time, something is going to fill your time, your moments, your thoughts. Something will. And the challenge for all of us is to fill it with a time of worship, a time of thanksgiving, a time of gratitude, a time of thinking and meditating on where would we be if it had not been for the Holy Spirit giving each of us the invitation to receive what Christ has paid for in full for all who will believe. I have a desire in my life. You know, you know, when Going back to the years when I was in Bible college, I I remember laying on my bed and thinking about the return of Jesus. And I actually said, Lord, could you wait until I get married? Could you wait? You know, I gave him all these lists of things that were important to me at that time. But you know, my friend, today, I believe that the biggest blessing and the greatest benefit for you and I in our lives is not what will come and it is not what has happened, but the greatest benefit is right in front of us and what we will do with that. Maybe you look at your life and you say, man, I just haven't, you know, I look at my life, I've done some good things for God, but I really haven't devoted, I haven't developed a lifestyle of just worship 
and praise and adoration of the Lord, personal, private time. You may be surprised at how many people go from Sunday to Sunday, and the only time that they really worship God and spend any time worshiping God is during that church service. And that's wonderful. Oh, but my friend, there's six other days in the week. There's so many more moments that God wants to speak to you. And my prayer for you today is that today the Holy Spirit, you would be receptive to the Holy Spirit, allowing this word of personal private worship to be so real in your heart and your life that you would begin to practice it. Father, in Jesus' name, that is my prayer, that you would help your people to be so aware and so cognizant of the fact that we should be personal, private worshipers as well as public worshipers. And I ask that you administer to those that maybe they look at that struggle, that pressure, the stresses, And maybe they feel like that if they only could get through this, then they would be able to be, no, the best time to do it is right now. Make them aware, give them the strength, the grace, and the boldness to follow through and to carry through. And Father, today we bless you. We dedicate the rest and the remainder of this day to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I got a feeling we're going to pick this back up tomorrow and continue on the, in, on the importance of being a personal, private worshiper and the heart of a worshiper. You're going to learn that David didn't always have it easy, but he was a worshiper. Before I say goodbye, I do want to encourage you, if you have not gone already, please go to our YouTube channel at Faith is the Victory Fellowship YouTube. And while you're there, subscribe. Also, at the end of the program, take a moment and go into the description section. And there you're going to find several safe, simple, and secure ways in which you can give back and sow a financial seed into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship fellowship. Your financial help helps us not only do these programs, but it also helps us to reach out and beyond and do other projects and things to benefit the kingdom and to bless other people. Hey, thank you for being with me today. I look forward to being back with you right back here tomorrow at Faith is the Victory Fellowship Facebook, right back here tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern. But until then, always remember, I love you. God loves you, and as always, my friend, never, ever forget, He is faithful.